able to join us. So um, I know that we have some other people join. So Jenny, hello. Um, Isabella, I think I've said hello to you. Hi, Spencer. And yeah, thank you guys for joining me this morning. So um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we are specifically going to be talking about natural selection to complete the lab. So this is going to be a chance for us to connect about that. Um, because the natural selection lab, that if you came to my lesson yesterday or had a chance to read, or excuse me, watch the video that I've posted, then you will have had a chance to see that we were really looking at what happens when um, specific traits give us a, a benefit. Right, when if you have a specific trait that is going to benefit, keyword here, your environment, um, that's going to give you a better chance of survival, which means you'll have a better chance of surviving your genes into the offspring. Um, so just a couple of things about natural selection. Um, this is one of the mechanisms, uh, one of the ways that evolution happens. There are other ways, but with this is the one that we are going to be focusing on specifically. So a couple of things of natural selection, um, we're going to put it into practice. So we're going to have an opportunity to see how it works. Um, reflection, um, how does this affect of evolution? And then I didn't take this one out. That's all we're going to cover. <laughs> so ignore number four. <laughs> um, so. Uh, any questions before we get started? Is there anything that you guys have clear would like clarification on, whether it's the course in general, due dates, the lab, anything? Um, any questions so far? No. Um, it looks like we're uh, so Logan. You asked how many labs will there be this quarter? There's a about one per unit. Uh, so there's at least one lab per unit. Some of them are going to involve the kit. Some of them are going to be more um, physical, like what we did with this week's lab. But there should be, I would say, probably five more um, because there's about five lessons, so about three or four more. Okay. Good question. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk. So these are those things that I would like for you guys to take notes on, right? So evolution, understanding the big picture is going to help us understand natural selection as one of the ways this happens. So evolution, write this down in your notes, please. It is the change of biological characteristics over, over several generations okay so really big thing that we're talking about here is several generations remember i told you guys that uh, there's a couple of things that i'm going to talk about that are really important in terms of the misunderstandings or the misconceptions about evolution and it's really important um, for us to understand that evolution happens over a lot of years, many generations. It's not something that's going to happen in someone's single lifetime. Um, so, or an individual's single lifetime. So, keep that in mind. Write this down. Evolution is the change of biological characteristics over several, excuse me, generations. Okay. I'm going to give you guys about 30 more seconds to write this down. And then we're going to move into the next. When you are ready to move on, just type in the chat, ready, and I'll know. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ava. Carl is here. Kaylee is here. Yay. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, Logan. Okay. All right. So um, it seems like some of us are finishing up. So great. Thank you, Owen. So we are going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. If you didn't have a chance to write this down, don't forget, I will be posting this video um, in the announcements. Okay. 
So um, again, so we'll have here is a quote from Charles Darwin. Um, and he says that natural selection acts only by taking advantage of slight successive variations. It can never take a great and sudden leap, but must advance by short and sure, though slow steps. So again, going back to this idea that evolution, natural selection does not happen within one, one lifetime. It's something that happens over many generations and it's when there is an advantageous reason to have a biological characteristic. So really making sure that we understand that natural selection again takes over a long period of time. It doesn't happen within um, our life in, in one individual lifespan. Oh, and just to clarify, Charles Darwin is kind of seen as the grandfather of, um, or the father of uh, evolution. He is really famous, one of the most famous scientists because he was the one who um, traveled and went to the Galapagos Islands. That's a really famous um, scientific discovery. You can talk about Darwin's finches which we won't necessarily talk too much in depth, I might bring up here and there. But Charles Darwin um, is a very common name. They use it in TV shows all the time. They talk about this Darwinian um, complex. And so you might hear this in and outside of biology and you may have already heard it. So that's what they are saying when they talk about Darwin and evolution and stuff like that. Okay, so let's talk about natural selection as a process. So what is the process of natural selection? How does it happen? Um, so a couple of things. Um, so according to Darwin, we have this idea of evolution, right? We already had like a quick explanation. So a little bit more detail. Evolution brings a remarkable change in the morphology, anatomy, and genetic of a living organism which helps them to adjust in a better manner in the environment and coordinate with the fluctuating conditions with time. Um, Darwin's theory of evolution stated that all life is related and has descended from a common ancestor. Again, really important that this is talking about um, over time and another key thing here, evolution has to do with the environment. Okay, so it has to do with what is the better um, traits to make them survive within their environment. So you may have heard of this term survival of the fittest. Um, one thing that is a common misconception is that survival of the fittest is the strongest, is the fastest, is the biggest. And that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, we think about survival of the fittest, meaning whatever is fit, for that environment and what happens, right? They taught and Darwin mentions this idea of fluctuating conditions when the environment changes, that's when we start to see evolution occurring um, because the organisms that have the better survival, the better characteristics to survive are better suited or better fitted for that environment. They're gonna live long enough to reproduce and put their genes in the next generation. And that's why it takes multiple generations. So um, that means that there would have been a common ancestor. And we start to see that throughout some of the, um, uh, I'm blanking out on the word, but there is a phylogenetic tree, I think is what it's called. It could make a mistake there, um, but definitely is something that uh, it, it, we have evidence to suggest that there is common ancestry. So here's a couple of terms that we use when we're talking about Darwin's evolution. Variation. Now, this is really important because this is where the start of evolution or natural selection begins. There needs to be a variety um, of genes. So for example, when we talk about that in humans, we talk about the variety of gene and different variations of a gene like the blue color, eye color, brown eye color. All of these different colors of eyes are a type of variation of a gene. And that's true for 
other other genetics, other parts of our body. So when you think about um, our natural selection lab, they talked about the length of a uh, lizard's feet in California. They were talking about how um, if you haven't had a chance to complete the lab, make sure you follow along in my video because I kind of go over some of the specifics. But the context that they were giving us in our lab was that there was this urban sprawl happening in California, right, where there was all this development and building that it was making it harder for these lizards to find food because they had to go farther. So how does having longer legs and shorter legs change their ability to survive and that variety of leg length is what we're talking about here right when we talk about variation um so really making sure that we understand what that means and why it's so important we also have something called inherited traits so that's genes that are passed down from parent to offspring which we learned about um, in unit five when we talked about or excuse me was it unit four when we talked about a meiosis and how you can pass down a trait. Um, one thing that I really want to bring up between variation and inherited traits, there's this term that we use that when we talk about it in biology is neutral. There isn't a good thing or a bad thing, but if we hear about it in um, you know society, it has a negative connotation. It has like this bad meaning towards it, but that's not the case. And that's the term mutation. Um, so you may have heard of mutations, mutants, X-Men, right? We talk about how X-Men, um, they're mutants, um, and that really just means that there is a change in the DNA. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Um, sometimes mutations that occur, mistakes in the genetic code, we learned about what happens when there's mistakes and in the DNA, um, if there are mistakes, then that changes the ability for that codon to be read during translation. Um, and then during translation, that protein is gonna come out a little different. Now, sometimes those differences are really dangerous and it doesn't allow us to perform. Like when we talked about sickle cell, um, the change in shape of our blood, our red blood cells really is, affects our ability to carry oxygen throughout the body. But sometimes mutations happen and it's a good thing. So for example, going back to our lab, there was a mutation somewhere. There was a mistake somewhere in the DNA that, that coded for longer legs. And in the case of the lizard with the urban sprawl, longer legs were actually more helpful. They were able to go farther distances um, and it allowed them to find food, right? But with, so there was a mutation, there was a mistake in the DNA, and then if that mutation helps, it gets inherited into the next generation. So that's kind of a really big thing that we also talk about. There needs to be a, the ability for mistakes to occur, for mutations to occur. There's also offspring compete, uh, meaning that resources are competed for among their own species as well as other species, but specifically um, there are some, uh, there has to be competition for resources that allows for one of the traits to be better off. It allows them to be better at that specific um, ability, mode of survival. So there is some resource for, um, there's some competition for resources. And there's also survival. So this term of survival, what does it mean to survive? Well, it sounds like it's pretty straightforward. You live, right? You're able to make it through whatever challenges come your way. But when we talk about survival in Darwin's evolution, we're talking about evolution and natural selection. What we really mean by survival is that they had an allele. So coming back to these vocab words, there's these specific alleles or traits that help that organism um, have a better chance of survival. So we're going back to the same things over and over. There's a trait that allows them to have a better chance of surviving that environment. And that means they have a higher chance of living until they can reproduce. And then they can put those traits into the next generation. So their offspring are going to have it. And then that they'll be able to better survive. And then they'll be able to reproduce. And then they'll 
go ahead and pass it. And that's one of the reasons why we say natural selection, excuse me, happens in multiple generations. It does not just happen one day does not just happen out of the blue it doesn't happen within your lifetime you know if you like you know if if you're a giraffe and you are um a taller or, or excuse me a shorter necked giraffe and you're like able to eat you know lower trees and then there is this parasite that comes in and kills all of the lower trees you are then not going to be able to grow your neck more um to reach the higher trees right Unfortunately, that shorter neck giraffe wouldn't be able to survive. And then the taller neck giraffes would, and they would be the ones to reproduce and pass it on to their next generation. And that would happen. And then overall, we would see a shift in the entire population would have longer necks. That one poor giraffe that has the shorter neck, um, they wouldn't be able to experience that change because that is something that they can't just grow. You can't just grow a longer neck, right? If that were the case, I would not stay as five foot, okay? I would be growing myself to like five four, the sweet spot. That's all I wanna be. All I ask is to be five four, um, but that will not happen in my lifetime, so. Okay, so that was a lot. That was a lot of information. Your five, six, Christian, gosh, just rub it in, my goodness. Oh. Um, okay, so these are some important terms. Hopefully you've been writing this down as I was talking. If you didn't, then I really recommend that you take a picture of the screen or you take a screenshot because I am going to be moving on. So um, just some basic terms so that we can understand the process. So here we have the process of natural selection. Again, you might want to be writing this down, taking a picture of it, whatever it is you're doing to take notes during this class, um, this session. So basically what happens is the organism is living. Your, your organism is living its life in its environment. You know, it's let's say there hasn't been a major change. So there isn't a lot of things that are making or changing the traits. You know, you're just going about your day. But then there is a change in your environment. So there needs to, there, it's not that there needs to be a change, but this is really the driving force for natural selection. Now, changing in the environment can be something so subtle or it can be something really big. Um, and that's just going to determine, you know, how things are going to follow after. But the biggest thing is that there is a change in the environment and that drives natural selection. So um, whether that means, right, like we had all those forest fires um, in, the, in the mid, right around in our backyards in the beginning of the year in September. And so that's going to change the landscape. When we talked about the Eagle Creek fire in um, the, the gorge, and I don't know, you guys may have been quite young to remember that. I mean, you guys are 14. This happened five years, four years ago. So you guys were 10 or so. So maybe, you know, you remember the gorge was on fire and it completely changed the landscape and the environment. So there's some sort of change that occurs in the environment. Um, and that means that there are, they, they adapt. So this is where we start to see this word adaptation. Some alleles or traits are better suited for the changes in environment. So like, let's say um, there were, you know, birds that had um, maybe in a forested area, like in the gorge, where there was a lot of trees and brush, birds having shorter wings were beneficial because they were able to kind of dive. Shorter wings allows there for more aerodynamics. And so they were able to kind of dive in between um, branches. But uh, now that there aren't as many branches, maybe birds need to fly for longer distances. So a slightly longer wing that allows for more gliding would be beneficial. So what we'll see is that longer wings are now better for the change in environment, right? And then we go to this idea of the survival of the fittest. This is what I talked about before. So talking about how the traits that are better for the new environment, they're going to be the ones that live long enough to reproduce and then put their genes into the next generation. Now, 
That's not to say that if you all of a sudden have short wings, you're not going to be able to reproduce and put short wings into the next generation. You will. Um, but what we're saying is that that is why, why we say natural selection takes multiple generations. Maybe in that first generation of the change in environment, there's still ability to reproduce um, or, excuse me, still survive with the, uh, the original or the, you know, what was original or once was, once was better suited for the environment when there were trees still, um, will still be able to reproduce. But, you know, after a couple generations, the ones with longer wings that may be better suited for the environment are going to be able to inch out. Um, and that's also true for predators, right? If you are in a situation where the environment allows for better camouflage, we talk about this in um, mice a lot. There's this one study uh, that happened um, out to where there was, you know, a brown coverage in the desert and these mice were able to better blend in. So the hawks were actually getting darker colored mice because they weren't able to blend in with their surroundings. But then there's a change in the environment. The, the surface then becomes covered with lava. So now the darker mice are actually better at camouflaging and the brown mice are sticking out. So the hawks actually go for the brown mice. So as the, the key things, I'll say this again, the key things that we want to remember when we're talking about natural selection is that it has to happen over generations. It doesn't happen in one person's lifetime one individual's lifetime. Um, it's a change in the population. So it's an overall change. Remember, it's not in one person's in, in, in their lifetime. It's over many generations. So the population changes over time. That's the other thing. It happens over many generations and there should be a change in the environment um, in order for it to drive natural selection, okay? So the, um, any other questions about this? Make sure that you are taking pictures. Make sure that you are writing this down. Does anyone need more time to write down um, the process? Okay, so I have not heard that there needs to be more time. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. So now we're gonna have a chance to practice how natural selection works. Um, so it's gonna take me a second because I didn't um, I didn't know how many were going to show up for today's lesson, so I didn't pre-make some of the slides. We're gonna go into breakout sessions here in a minute. Now we have 23 people here, so I would like groups of three. So whoever can do math, how many groups are we gonna have for three? Three people, I think it's gonna be what, seven, seven, seven groups, um, two and four, eight, yeah, okay. So there's gonna be groups of three, and I, um, let me go over the directions for you first. So we're gonna be doing an exercise. Um, and you, okay, I, I said shark, I changed the animals so many times. So really, it's actually going to be, um, you're a hawk. <laughs> you're a hungry, hungry hawk. Um, and you are going to try to capture as many squirrels as you can in 30 seconds. Um, you're going to click and drag the squirrels to your corner. It can just off of the, um, you're going to just count off, you're going to just put it to the off of the sides of the slide. I'm going to give you access to the slide in a second. Um, but in 30 seconds, how many squirrels can you eat? Okay, you're gonna click and drag the squirrels to your corner and then you're gonna count how many there are at, left over at the end of the round. So you're not counting how many you ate, you're gonna be counting how many there are left. And so we have this, uh, this table and so I would like for you to write down this table. Okay, so um, really quickly in your notes, just write this down. It is six columns um, and five rows. And I want you to, we're gonna count how many of the red squirrels survived, how many of the tan squirrels survived, how many total survived, and then we can come back and find the percentages over time. Um, but we've got our generation, so our F1 generation, F2, F3, and F4, and then after the F2, we're gonna see that there is a fire, um, so a change in the environment. Um, 
So we're just going to um, we're going to fill this table out as a class because I think it would be really interesting to pull all of our data together. But at the very least, you're going to do this as a group first. So make sure that you guys are drawing this table down in your paper. Um, uh, so let me know when you are done and ready to move on. And while you guys are doing that, actually, I am going to, um, while you guys are making this, I am going to start to, yeah, I'm going to start to uh, make some duplicates. So we said seven of three, one of two. So that's going to be eight. Gonna take a while, huh? Okay, three, four. Thank you, Logan. Okay, so for others, make sure that you guys are drawing this table. Let me know when you're done. Great, man. Thank you. Great, Christian. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So, uh, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to be putting you guys into groups. Um, and then, you know, I've, uh, every single time I've been doing this, I've been putting like group one at the top. But really, can we just all agree that group if you are in breakout group one you're going to start at slide 12 two you're going to be at 13 three you're going to be at 14 and so forth okay so really just um go ahead and you know count which one in order let me go ahead and share the slide with you guys now so that way you can um go ahead and um get on there before I put you guys in the groups. And then the other thing that I really want you guys to do is because you guys are all going to be in different, um, good, Logan, you're great. That's such a great way of thinking about it. Yes. Uh, the slide number is going to be 11 and then plus your group number. Um, so when I am going to give you guys the link, and what I'm going to want you guys to do, I also want you guys, among the three or four of you, I want you guys to elect who's going to be the one that starts the timer. So 30 seconds to try to get as much as you can. And I want, and then so somebody is going to have to be in charge of when to stop and start it. Okay, so I'm going to wait until I see I've got 21 people. So we've lost a couple of people. Um, so I should have 21 people up here. Um, so I'll just kind of wait. Great. I'm seeing all you guys joining. This is wonderful. I love it. Great. My gosh, I'm losing more people. This is supposed to be the fun part. Okay. What was that? Copy and paste. My computer has been copied the link and pasted in a new tab. Yeah. Okay. So I see that there is um, 
14 people. Um, so we do still have a couple of people that are waiting and everything. So um, I will go and check in with you as, you know, as I see. Um, but if somebody can have that link pasted and ready to go so that way you can paste it in your group chats. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put you in your groups. Remember that somebody is going to have to um, do the counting and then go to your appropriate slide. Okay, so making sure that you are going to um, going to the correct ones. And then what was your question? Uh, you're not color coding the birds. No, so you're a hawk and you want to eat them. So you are going to take as many as you can and pull it to this off of the side of the the, the slide. So you're going to try to click and drag, click and drag, but we're not going yet. We're not going yet. I guess you could select them. You can, well, don't, don't just try to select all of them. There is a reason we're doing this. Um, I'm going to put you guys in your breakout room in just a second. Okay. So don't try to just select all of them. That's no fun. So we're trying to, we're trying to see the mechanism of, uh, of natural selection. So. Try to go with the flow and try to follow the the, the um, instructions. All right, I'm putting you in your breakout sessions.
All right, welcome back. Okay, so um, I was taking a look at some of your guys' um, some of your guys' results. Okay, so um, really quickly, I want you guys to take a look. So as you should, oh my gosh, I had so I had like ten people drop from that. How crazy is that? This is supposed to be the fun stuff. Okay, now um, I want you guys to take a look at the table that you filled out. So you were supposed to count how many were how many survived, how many um, red squirrels, and how many tan squirrels. Now while you guys are doing that, um, so while you yeah you're just doing um, you should have only have done F one generation. We're not on F two yet, so. Um, make sure that you are following directions, okay? So um, that's okay. So I'm gonna go through and make some edits and get us prepared for the next round. But what I want you guys to be doing is take a look and see and filling out your table and then find out the percentage. So what percentage of your animals survived? And so what I'm gonna be doing here in a second is I am going to edit your guys' slides to set us up for the next one. And then make sure you're not counting the ones that don't have outlines because that's not part of it. Okay. So make sure you go ahead and get your percentages. So you should have counted how many total um, squirrels are left over. And then you should have counted how many. Um, uh, and then to get the percentage, you're going to delete, uh, or excuse me, you're going to divide. Okay, so we have all these guys that did not make it. The hungry, hungry hawk came in and got their meal. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to just come through and get us ready for the next session. So go ahead and find the percentage. Okay. All right, this group is the all of them. So this is going to be an interesting discovery. And I'm going to leave those for you. Okay. All right. Okay, so now what what we're what has happened now is that we just had um okay, so first of all, tell me what you got. So um Christian, you got 21% per of what? 21% was how many? Was that 21% brown, 21% red? Okay. One hundred percent red was left over. Remember, we're talking about how many were left over. Okay, so sixteen percent tan, eighty-four percent red, meaning twenty-one red, four tan, um, twenty-five total. Good. Thank you, Logan. What about others? What did others see? What else, what other data did you guys get? Don't be shy to share. All right. Well, um, I'm almost done here. So just give me another second. So 81% red. Good, Aiden. So in this trait, right, they're in the top of the forest and they're able to like, you know, hop around um, from tree to tree. And, and what do you notice? What was the um, favorable trait in this environment? What was... What if you were a squirrel, what color did you want to be? 
yeah, to have red fur, right? That was the trait that's most favorable in this environment. Good. And then um, what we're seeing right now, um, so we know that there was a lot left over. And so what we can start to expect to see is we start to see that they were able to survive. They made it, right? They made it through all of your guys' um, hungry meals. And now they are going to survive, be happy. They find their mate and they are going to reproduce. So what you're seeing now, if you go back to your slide, they were exactly, Logan, they were able to provide camouflage, therefore they were protected. So then they went through and they were able to survive. They were so happy. So then they made it with their partner and they had an offspring. So now what we're gonna see in the second round here is we have our F2 generation. And so with our F2 generation, the hawk is coming back. They're like, oh, I heard there's more food. So go back to your, when you go back into your, um, into your groups, you are again going to put 30 seconds on the clock and try to eat as many as you can. Okay. So again, we're going to have the exact same thing occur where you are going to try to get as many as you can. Um, moving it over to the side, and then you are going to count. Um, you are going to then count how many um, you were able to eat. Okay, so um, let's get you back into your groups. Um, I know some of you may need to. We may need to change some of these groups around. So I'm going to put into new groups just to, to you know compensate for those who were um, who left and now you are going to go to their new slide and so that just means that if you were moved to a new group that just means that you need to be marked down their numbers okay all right so again one person is going to choose 30 seconds on the clock you're going to try to eat as many squirrels as possible and then you're going to record those that survived in the F2 in your table, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. See you soon.
All right, welcome back. Okay, so now we're running out of time. So I just wanna do this for two more rounds. Um, so now count how many survived, right, in your table. And this is the F2 generation. So go ahead and count how many survived. I'm gonna be doing my thing, getting us ready for the next round. So you're gonna see me delete the ones that you ate. <laughs> Um, and yes, so go ahead and do the same thing. Count up how many survived, how many red, how many tan, how many total, and then find the percentages, okay? So let's try to do our best to um, do this a little bit quickly. And there is definitely, okay, so is that all of the, okay, because I think we had so many people drop off. Okay, so as you guys are um, figuring out that, um, well, Christian, even though your platform may have not been working, you can still work with your group and figure it out, and figure out what the, um, what your group got. I frozen okay so 27 red which was 55 percent red survived christian you are getting distracted my friend so let's try to refocus and my thing just froze no okay let's try and see if i can there we go there we go that's what i needed Beep. okay um, okay, so um, give me some aid and shared what he found. What else? What else did you guys find in your number of survivors? Good. So we start to see. So what are some patterns that we're noticing? Um, right? What are some things that we notice about the camouflage and what's happening with the population? Um, what color do, you know, did our offspring, like what happened to from one generation to the next? There were less white, right? Yes, exactly, Logan. More red, Isabella. Good, because of evolution and natural selection. Well, tell me a little bit more about that, Logan. Yeah, that's part of it. But tell me, like, try to tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that. My thing is freezing like crazy and not allowing me to do what I need to do. Okay. Well, I think that for right now, we're going to, good, only the red survived mostly. And that's because they have a trait that's advantageous for their environment, right? The red colored squirrels had a better probability of surviving and therefore um, putting their genes into the next generation, right? Yes, the whites were more visible and were hunted more, um, right? So that's the less favorable trait. Um, but my, I am getting some serious issues with my um, uh, connection. So, and I've got only three minutes left. So we're going to pause there. Um, I want you guys to really come to small group this week because we're going to finish up the last two rounds of this unit, of this in, this lesson, okay? So make sure that you are coming. And also, um, uh, the other thing is um, we're going to also be talking about viruses and prokaryotes in small groups. So we're going to finish up this lesson and learn a little bit about the next lesson as well, okay? All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really, really enjoyed having you all here with me. So have a wonderful Tuesday. Please remember there are 
um, there are small groups. We're going to finish this lesson up. So please, please, please come. You're welcome, Elias. Um, and then if you haven't seen the video for the lab, it's already posted. And um, always remember, help sessions are available every day. So um, thank you so much, Denny. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day, everyone. Bye now. Spencer, Christian, are you guys there?